Okay, so, uh, you know, a little bit of a jam here. It's a little sketchy of a fall. Just shimmied up that way. Hopefully, I'll be able to get back down. But uh, you can look across at those canyons and see some lovely caves. There's, uh, you know, plenty of bats and probably uh, barn swallows down there. Down in a canyon, you can see a couple uh, Arizona cypress, which is uh, one of my favorite trees. Pretty odd one. These are the right pairing areas. Yeah, see, the, see, there's a cypress. Beautiful zygomorphic corolla. Remember to play in Taginaceae. So uh, what we're doing is we're looking for another uh, rare peridoli, another rare aster, rock-dwelling aster. Uh, you know, they, they kind of comes with the territory. You got to risk your ass to see these things. Uh, they are here, but the ones down about 10 feet below me weren't flowering. So I'm going to go up there and see uh, see if there's any flowering up there. Hopefully I don't die. Oh, that's such a beautiful snapdragon vine. Look at that. Look at those, uh, look at that calyx too on an unopened flower. See, one's open and the one to the left is, uh, I don't believe that's open yet. That's not, I don't think that's the fruit. Anyway, uh, my hands are trembling a little bit less now since I'm not trying to support myself in that uh, sketchy crevasse. So uh, hopefully you can get a good stable glimpse of that wonderful exposure of rhyolite. Wonderful volcanic cliffs. Rhyolite, again, is an extrusive igneous rock. Extrusive igneous uh, just means volcanic. You know, it was extruded upon the surface. But this rhyolite, uh, this 23 million year old rhyolite, was uh, it cooled pretty quickly uh, and it was subsurface. So it wasn't deep like granite, but it wasn't quite on the surface. It was just still one large mass. Oh, look at the, look at that little oak germinating there. And down there again, it's, I love these goddamn cypress trees. Look at that, the, the blue. Arizona cypress, Capressus arizonica, not in genus Hesperocypris, since uh, Capressus is a genus is reserved solely for the old world, that is east side of the Atlantic cypress uh, species. Oh, there's wasps. How about that? Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, look at that nice fern. Beautiful Myriopteris, another, another one of the Teradaceae ferns. All right, let's uh, see what, we, what else we can get up. Uh, so over here we got a beautiful species of oak, one of my personal favorites. This is Quercus hypoleucoides. Look at those beautiful silver abaxial surfaces. And it's, it's not that big right here because it's growing out of rack. You don't get that much water. You know, got full exposure over there. You got the Quercus arizonica. And over there you got the, what looks like the, it's that shrub oak again. It almost looks like a Quercus chrysolopus. And then you got another one over there. Is that Amorii or some shit? Four oaks all growing together, but by far Hypoleucoides is the most uh, the most beautiful. Goddamn, Zeric oaks, Desert Highland oaks. God, I love this. I seen this on that mountain. First time I seen this, it was on that mountain where the observatory is west of Tucson, the Kent or whatever the hell. I think it's Kent Observatory. Who knows? Named after a dead guy. It's about all. I, that's about all I remember. I'm sweating like I'm sweating like hell. I don't know how I'm gonna get down. I'll figure it out later. Let's go look for this plant. Here's a nice little shrub oak. Tiny acorns. You know, you flip those leaves over, look at the abaxial surface. You got a little bit of volutinous fuzz on there, some pubescence. Okay, let's see if we can find more uh peridoli cochisensis up there. Shit, none of these are flowering. Anyway, there you go. There's peridoli cochisensis again, growing straight out of the goddamn rack. Against all rhyme and reason, you know, in a pretty sketchy, uh, oh shit, <laughs> in a pretty sketchy uh, habitat, you know, uh, not sure if I would uh, ever do this again, but uh, there you go, you can see that, oh, I got purple stems too, it's just about the flower, probably in like a week. Super glabrous too. Little little spade shaped uh, leaves. Yeah. Yeah, totally sketchy. Totally sketchy, not maybe not worth dying for. Maybe not. Look at this bean. Look at it. The keel is exposed. All the sexy parts are just out. Naked beans. Wonder what this one is. The foliage is very voluminous too. Very fuzzy and shit. 
Oh, that's kind of sketchy, huh? <laughs> How am I going to get down? Holy shit. Hey, look. There's a Peridoli Cochi Census. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, there it is. See it just sticking out of the rock right there? It's been like this the whole goddamn way up. This rhyolite, rhyolite's a pain in the ass to, to uh, traverse. It's just, uh, you know, super sketchy, breaks real easily, forms these talus piles. God damn. That was just an ad for Red Wing, by the way. You know, they're pretty good boots as long as you uh, buy the 10% of their stock that's still made in the, the United States. You know, the other 90% is made in China. It falls apart. Typical, uh, typical Chinese quality. Real shit. You know, the company used to be good, but they've kind of gone to shit lately. Yeah, so anyway, uh, this is a kind of a drag. This plant's not going off. Just the remnants of it. Uh, this is a, a, another parasitic plant. Uh, you can tell just by that kind of cone shape. Pretty odd. This is in the oral bank case. This is a plant by the, the genus name of Conophilus. You can see it's just whatever's left over of it. Oh, I can just pull it out the ground right there. Now you get this in a... You even get this... Uh, oh, yeah, look at it. Look at those... Hostorial roots. Hostorial, remember, are just the uh, uh, roots that plug into uh, uh, other plants. Just, uh, you know, it being a parasite and whatnot. Uh, but, ooh, it stinks. Anyway, you get, the, like I was saying, you get Conophilus. Uh, you know, I've seen it in Mexico. Uh, I've seen it in the Chicago area. Uh, it's just a, a parasite in the family Orobankaceae. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's parasitic. This one's obviously parasitizing uh, this oak right here. Just at the base of this, this sketchy rhyolite cliff, I almost broke my ass going up. Yeah, anyway, here's that uh, Capricious Arizonica, Arizona Cypress, now in the genus Hesperocypress. That bark is real uh, notable, makes it really easy to distinguish uh, from uh, the junipers, which it looks a little bit like. And you can see up there, I don't know if you can see it, those are the cones up there. Those little soccer ball looking things. Anyway, these just died in the fire. A lot of them did. You can see that guy, he's dead. But there's, you know, there's seedlings all over the place with the shit. You, you almost know, always see these growing in a wash. Namely because, you know, water is the main dispersal mechanism for the seeds. And then uh, also just they, they need, especially in the desert, they need a lot of water, you know. They're going to need some, uh, they're going to need some goddamn, uh, some moisture in there. Those little white dots are the glands. So in Arizona, you get the Hesperocypris Arizonica. And then you, get, uh, you also get Hesperocypris uh, glabra, which has almost smooth bark like a madrone, really smooth and polished, and a uh, pink and purple and tan and what the shit. Real nice bark. It's, it's a prettier bark than this. I do have to say, Capricious glabra. And you get that up there by Sedona, where all, where all the old people go for the uh, for the winter. You know, you get old people and shit. What do they call them? Snowball, snow bunnies, snowbirds. What do they call those things? I don't know. Who gives a shit? Anyway, oh, there's some more of those cypresses. Real interesting spot if you're into cypresses is that there's a, a disjunct population of them over in a, in a southern New Mexico. The nearest population is 300 miles away, but in the Cook's Range, there's a small population hugging the north side of a cliff uh, of, uh, of those Hesperocypris arizonica. Ooh, Platinus radii? Quercus hypoleucoides? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, so, you know, that disjunct population is interesting because obviously it's what you would call a Pleistocene relic. It's left over from, uh, from when the population was a lot more widespread and the climate was a little bit different. I mean, a lot different. It wasn't hot as balls. It wasn't a goddamn desert yet. can't believe we went up there. Fuck that. Never again. Hey, just kidding. I'll probably do that about, a, you know, another couple hundred times uh, throughout the course of my life. If, uh, as long as I don't get hit by a bus or... Or taken out or something, you know, and, uh, anytime soon. Anyway, here's that, the, the Platinus radii. And this one over here is pretty interesting. This is a species of Acer, species of maple, which uh, you'll know, of course, like that uh, riparian shits. You know, they like, the, they like what you call the riparian stees. Sapindaceae. It used to be Aceraceae, now it's Sapindaceae. Oh, look at that. You got a species of populace, too. God damn. Almost looks like an aspen, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess we are at about 5,000 feet. So, you know, the, the maples are pretty interesting because, uh, you know, same thing going on. They like moisture. Is, is, uh, land masses change to desert, 
you, they kind of they kind of drop out, and you see that a lot in Mexico. There's a couple of there's a couple basically relic populations of maples. I think there's only a, like a handful of them in Mexico, and they're all up in the higher uh, the higher elevations, much higher elevations. We're talking like 8,000, 9,000 feet. I think there's even one in the uh, Jalisco State. I don't know. Yeah, okay, so here I am on the other side of the canyon. Some real nice looking caves over there. And it looks uh, just about as sketchy on this side as it does on that side, which makes sense because it's the same rock. And here again is that uh, the Peridoli Cochi Census. Pretty rare plant endemic to this mountain range, and it's still not goddamn flowering. So, you know, the phenology's just off. The fuck, what can you do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? There's not much you could do. Shit, well, whatever. It's still nice, you know? It's still nice. Beautiful Quercus hypolocoides. Pine is some broides and what the shit. Nice pinion pine. But the floor is a lot different further uh, up that wash, you know? Just uh, a lot more of that uh, Pleistocene relic stuff going on. You know, more of the moisture demanding stuff that's just been locked in this uh, little canyon. Used to be more widespread in this region, and then as the climate dried out and got hotter over the last 10,000 years, you know, and they just got stuck here, like the maples and the cypresses and shit. Anyway, maybe I'll get down. I don't know. God damn. So anyway, here we are at the base of another rhyolite that escarpment, and it uh, it seems like uh, there's an impediment to travel. You know, this is a, probably about the furthest I can go upwards anymore. But let's see what we got over here. You know, I take back what I said about rhyolite. You know, it's pretty. It's a fucking pain in the ass, but uh, but it is pretty. Oh yeah. Wonder who was hanging out in here uh, 900 years ago, huh? You know, I think, I think I'm finally up against a wall here. I can't, uh, can't go anywhere else. Just say, uh, <laughs> the wall just seems a little too unstable. If I could just get over on the other end, maybe there's uh, some more ancient dwellings or something. Who knows? But probably not any plants, so maybe there's not uh, much reason to go. Oh, yeah, anyway. All right, well... Yeah, I guess I'm done here, huh? Just gotta get down without breaking my ass. Well, don't you love rhyolite? Don't you love rhyolite? I bet you love rhyolite now, don't you? Say what you will, but it's got these little knobs in it. Makes it pretty easy to climb. I can get up there real easy. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a nice little cave over here. Woo! A oh, nice mat. Oh yeah, look at all that shit. Look at all that rat shit. How do you say hantavirus? Still, that's beautiful though, huh? It's pretty nice. Look at how green and verdant it is over there. It's on the north side of that escarpment.
Interesting. See how the rye like cools in plates like that? All right. All right, that's enough for today. That's enough fucking eye candy. I'm sweating like hell. You gotta get down. You can get down without breaking my ass. Thought I'd see more bats, but uh, alas, nothing. Okay, now here's a nice member of the blueberry family, Eric Casey. This is Arbutus arizonica. Now you could tell it's different from other species of Arbutus in North America, such as Halopensis and the uh, Menziesii, which you get in California and all the way up in, uh, into Washington, because this has rough bark. All the other Arbutus have really smooth, uh, pleasant to touch bark. This is not so pleasant to touch. It's just pretty, you know, flaky and whatever this shit. I don't even think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's an adaptation to uh, growing into hot and dry climates or what. But uh, you could just see the littlest bit of smoothness poking out there. Anyway, the, the Arbutus menziesii and Halopensis, on a hot day you could touch them. They're so smooth and you could feel uh, the temperature change. The bark is cold because that water is, uh, that moisture that's being transported up in a xylem is, uh, you know, in the vascular tissue of the plant is so close to the surface. Uh, this with a thick uh, bark like this, you're not going to be able to feel that. But uh, either way, pretty cool plant. And they get the lots of tiny white urn-shaped flowers. You know, remember everything in the blueberry family, almost everything except rhododendrons, uh, produces those urn-shaped flowers. Well, not everything, but a lot. You know, blueberries and cranberries doing with the shit. So the madrones and manzanitas. And then, uh, of course, they get a berry with a bunch of seeds inside when they're ready to go. Leaves are totally glabrous. You know, whereas in jalapensis, they got a little bit of fuzz on them. Jalapensis, you get down in Mexico. But uh, yeah, the leaves there are totally smooth. And there you go, there's the uh, Arctostaphylos pungent. Same family as that Madrone Ericaceae. Uh, this one's pretty widespread. Goes on, goes uh, on down into Mexico. It's in California. It's all over the place. Second most widespread after uh, Arctostaphylos uva ursi. And then uh, another example of why you shouldn't use common names. This is a, a species of Nolina in a family Ruscaceae. Uh, and the uh, the common name for this bastard is a uh, bear grass. Which again, uh, bear grass refers to three or four uh, completely unrelated plants. You know, so you kind of just, you know, you're fucking yourself in the ass if you're using these, uh, these common names and shit. You know, I just, I don't know why, I don't know why people are so hesitant. You, you, don't, you, don't, like, you don't like vowels? I mean, what's the, what's the issue? You got an issue with Latin? Latin's a dead language. You can pronounce it however you want. It doesn't matter. Potato, potato, no lino, no line, it doesn't matter. Anyway, the fruit here, uh, this is in the order of Sparagalles. It's a monocot. There's what the basal rosette looks like. See, it just looks like grass. Then it gets this tall spike with these nice bricks on it and shit. Asparagales is that order, same order as agaves and uh, agaves and orchids and all that shit. There you go, there's the, I can't tell you, I think those are the, I don't know. You know what, I don't. I shouldn't open my mouth. I don't know if these are, these are the flowers or the fruits. I think they're the fruits. I think they're done. And there's uh, quite a few different species in Olena. You get Nolina perii and palmeri and fucking, I don't know. Name that there's some uh, dead white guy whose last name begins with a P. You get those in California. Some get pretty big. The perii get big. They get a, you know, they get a, they're basically coalescent. So they look kind of like a palm tree. They get upwards of five or six feet tall. See them in the Kingston Mountains over there in the east of Mojave. Either way, real pretty plant. Don't use common names. Don't be a jack off. Don't, uh, you know, try not to uh, set yourself up. For confusion there. Anyway, that's Nolina. So, you know, that's not even that bad, but that's just, you know, hazards of the game. Okay, sometimes you put your hand on an Echinoceros while you're uh, slipping down a, a sketchy crevasse. Uh, whatever, fuck it. Time to break out the uh, Leatherman and pull those out, huh?